These rules are in addition to using the core mechanic for one page rules. So stick around till the end of the video for the lore and the ability of my first legion, the Oculus Wolves. And for now, I'm going to introduce you to my Ultra Company, who are going to demonstrate most of the additional rules. So here they are. Now the first rule is Terrain. So here the company stands. And within range is a company of Oculus Wolves occupying this ruin here. Now it is the turn of the Ultra Company. And as you can see down there, the terrain has a toughness of 18. Now, as I said, it is the Ultra Company's turn, so we're going back over to them, and we're going to sh shoot uh, with their weapons, so four attacks, and that are five hits, I mean five attacks, five hits. Now we're going to roll to defend first with the Oculus Wolves. I'm grabbing four dice, and we're going to roll to defend. And that's not bad, they defend 3, but they take 2 wounds, so 2 damage, which means 2 of the Oculus Wolves are killed. Remove them from play. But those 2 hits also transfer to the terrain, which means it goes down from uh, 18 to 16. Now let's say um, the terrain has only one remaining hit point. And three Oculus Wolves are occupi occupying the, the ruin. So again, same deal. The Ultra Company shoots, scores four hits. Rolling to defend the four attacks. With four dice, <laughs> three. And they defend three of them, but they take one wound. Now, what does that mean? One of the Oculus Wolves dies. And he is removed from play. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the terrain also had one more remaining hit point, which means it is utterly destroyed and it collapses. So we're going to replace the terrain with a rubble pile, which some of you have seen in my previous crafting video. And if not, I will put a link in the description. And now they are standing on the rubble pile. And one of them died. But for the remainder... You, the remaining unit now has to take a dangerous terrain test, which means one dice per unit. If the test fails, the unit takes one wound. Now, if a model has more than one wound, roll the amount of dice equal to the toughness of that model. So first we're going to roll. And they're okay. They pass the dangerous terrain test, so they remain in position. Now, all units within three inches of the collapsed terrain also have to make a dangerous terrain test. So, three inches. And we're going to measure that from the edge of any type, uh, from any edge of the debris pile, the collapsed building. So there are none here. But let's say this guy is standing right here from another unit. Now the terrain collapses and he's within 3 inch, so he also must make a dangerous terrain test, which he passed. So he's alright. Now let's say the same guy is standing here, which is outside the danger zone of the three inches, he does not make to, need to make the dangerous terrain test. Now, a recap on the rule, the toughness of a terrain piece will receive the same amount of damage as the unit that is hidden inside of it. If it is destroyed, all units inside or within three inch of the terrain piece will have to make a dangerous terrain test. Now, let's go over to extra actions. Hunker down. Now, this unit is going to hunker down, so I'm going to begin by placing a token next to the unit. So they are going to hit the ground, as these Ultra Company boys are taking aim. Now, the unit is hunkered down, which means they have a minus two to hit them, but the hunker down unit cannot move or charge this turn. Now, they score two hits, and they're going to roll to defend it. And one of them defends, but the other one is taken out of play, so he's killed. Down he goes. Now, if they have not activated yet, the hunker down unit can still shoot when it's their turn. So they shoot, they score three hits, and now the Ultra Company can try to uh, defend the hits. Which they do, but one of them takes a wound, so one of them is killed. Pew! 
Now on to the next one, which is focused fire. All right, so first we're gonna measure and see if they are within 12 inch range of each other. And they are. Now, the unit that's, the unit stands stationary and takes up aim and they get a plus one to their hit rolls, which means if they roll a two, it is a hit. So let's say these hits are twos. Normally they would be fails, but in this case with the plus one, they scored a hit. So that are five hits coming the Ultra Company's way. Rolling to defend. And three defend, but two are taken out and they are killed. Now heavy charge. To do a heavy charge, you're gonna have to be uh, closer than 12 inch. So to do the charge, they get a plus one to hit rolls when charging, but only if the distance is over three inches and under six inches. Now note this ability can only be used for legions who have the furious or frenzy ability. Now this is my homebrew rule for that. So my world gorgers will definitely fit the bill. So due to the plus one to hit, uh, the unit of world gorgers are now going to hit on two pluses. Now normally, as they have uh, the furious ability, they would be rolling with uh, six dices, but just for demonstration purposes, now they score four hits. Rolling to defend, and there are three defense, and they take one wound, so the ultra company is down by one man. And that is how we do a heavy charge. Now on to Overwatch. Now this unit of the Ultra Company is on Overwatch, which means they hold from doing anything and prepare to shoot at the charging enemy. This unit's activation only consists of reacting once the enemy either moves or shoots, but they have a minus one to hit. So they need a four plus. Now they shoot and three of the hits get through. As we remember, they have a minus one to hit, so the three and the two are misses. Now, of course, uh, in midst of their charge, the World Gorgers are going to have to defend against this Overwatch shot. So they're going to have to roll three dices and see if they can defend it, which they don't. Um, one does, but two of them are shot. So they are now removed from play. But after they are removed from play, <clears throat> they simply continue with their charge as it was their activation. So these three will fight their normal charge move as normal. Rolling to hit. And that's one hit. Now there is a second option to Overwatch. Now the same Ultra Company is on Overwatch and they can shoot back when they are shot upon. But they have a minus one to hit penalty so these oculus wolves shoot and they scored five hits now we're gonna roll to see if they can defend against that which is not bad they defend four of them but one of them is killed but normally now the turn would end but in this case as they are on overwatch this ultra company is gonna shoot back at the oculus wolves with a minus one to hit and they score two hits now the Oculus Wolves are going to have to defend these two hits, and they don't. So one and two of the Oculus Wolves are killed due to the Overwatch. Number three. Morale. Now, you roll for morale as normal, but if you fail, the unit falls back 6 inches to the nearest terrain piece and ends their activation, regardless if they have activated or not. So let's see if they pass their morale. No, they fail their morale. So they're going to fall back 6 inches to the nearest terrain piece that is behind them. They're not going to move forward towards the enemy. They're going to move always going to move away from the enemy. And they withdraw and they automatically end their activation whether or not they have activated. Now recap on the video. There is no morale but instead units who fail their test withdraw to the closest terrain piece behind them. They fall back. They also have to start the next turn by rolling on morale and if they fail again they keep falling back 6 inches. They do not do anything else. Now four, K. 
Characters. Named characters or leaders roll on the wound table seen below. Now, if the dice result is a 1 or a 2, the character dies. If the result is a 3 or a 4, the character is knocked out and all remaining battles, they have a permanent minus 1 to their hit rolls. If the result is a 5, the character is injured, which means for this battle, they have a minus 1 to both their quality and defense rolls. Now, if the result is a 6, the character is stunned and they can't activate this turn. But in the next turn, they can activate just as normal again. Now, quick note, a Prime Father or a Prime Mother cannot permanently die. They are placed in a cryo chamber and have to skip 1d6 battles before they can return. Now, 5. Challenges. And a quick note on that, only leaders can declare a challenge to another leader and no other units are allowed to interfere with this duel. Now Horan challenges Rabaro Galen and he accepts it and if within 24 inch of each other they are set in base contact, like so. Ready to battle it out. Now if he declines however, nothing happens but both characters activation is over for the rest of the turn. You can also let fate decide for the outcome. Now, to let fate decide, roll a d6. If the result is a 1, a 2 or a 3, then the challenge is declined and both challengers end their activation for this turn, whether or not they have already activated. If the result is a 4, 5 or a 6, however, the challenge is accepted and the two challengers, if they are within 24 inch of each other, will have their duel. Also a quick note, when locked in a challenge, the characters cannot strike back. Number 6. Alliances. This is completely optional. Uh, I will be using the same alliances as in the Horus Heresy rulebook. But feel free to create your own interesting alliances. Now, if battle brothers work well together, they get a plus one to hit rolls, to either melee or shooting. And in addition, they get a plus one to their morale tests. Now, if two legions of battle brothers do not work well together, they get a minus one to hit rolls, both for melee and shooting. Now, on to lore and abilities of the Oculus Wolves. The Oculus Wolves. These are a proud legion. Swift and fierce in close combat and deadly and accurate from a distance. This trait is inherited by their prime father, Horan Lunar. They are well equipped to face any type of enemy that stands in the way of their goal. Just as their father, they want to bring the enemies of humanity to their knees. In the vast blackness of space and the millions of worlds, humanity is still being suppressed and enslaved by alien races and demonic powers. For the moment, the Oculus Wolves are fighting a fierce war with the Orcs who love slaughtering anything that comes in their path. Led by their warlord, Bragor Kal, the Orcs are fighting their way across human colonized worlds. When the Oculus Wolves arrived, the Orcs have finally met their match. Horan is a master for general, and while he draws in the enemy to open war, he sends smaller units to infiltrate the main structure to where they can cut off the head of the snake. Now once this is completed, Horan will send his remaining legion from the flank or from the back if need be, if the situation calls for it. With these tactics, the enemy has no chance at all. Now let us have a look how this army is played. So how do we play the Oculus Wolves Battle Brothers? Well, basically their stats are the ones found in the Battle Brothers army book. With the upgrades of your choosing, of course. Now, as for abilities, it is where I twist it up a little bit. And it is a bit different. Now, all of them, uh, of course, have the ability Fearless. But this will be so for every of my legions. Now, as this army is both well equipped for close combat and ranged fighting, they receive the ability Relentless and Furious. But you must choose one before activating a unit. So, let's say, for instance, if you declare a charge in melee, then you can activate the Furious ability. Now, if you activate the same unit in a different turn or another equal unit altogether to let them shoot their ranged weapons, then you can activate the Relentless ability. 
Now, you can choose to have them on the side uh, loyal to the God King, or you can just use them directly for the traitor side, rebelling against the God King. Their fighting style remains the same on either side, so... So, with that said, uh, do keep in mind, everyone, these are just my rules, and they are definitely not an obligation. I mean, it's just how I do this, or how I'm going to play this, and my own twist on this. But you can choose to play the game however you see fit. I mean, it's your game after all, and I'm not the person to dictate otherwise. The main rule of the entire game is to have fun, so no matter how you play it, but if you are not playing solo like I am, mostly because of the battle reports, it might be a respectful idea to discuss the rules with your opponent and see if they uh, agree with this. Alright everybody, so thank you all very much for watching and all your support and I hope this video explanation was rather clear to you guys. And do remember, uh, you don't have to use this play the game however you want this is just how i'm going to do my campaign and if some of you want to use these rules have fun with them as i will now the first battle report will be this weekend and it will be the prologue with horan himself with his oculus wolves facing off against the warlord of the orcs bragor kal so i hope you stick around for that battle report as we get the age of the heretic on the way so thank you all again for watching guys and i will see you on the next run all right bye for now bye